Welcome to Night Peak. I'm Edward St. Hay. Well, tonight, the Bigfoot hunter, Donald McDonald, who did a pilot for Destination America about six months ago, well, they've aired it 15 times. It looks like they might have a whole series on their hands. We'll find out what he's been up to, the Bigfoot search here in the southeastern U.S., next on Night Peak. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. We'd like to welcome Donald McDonald. Welcome yeah. to the show. Good to be back. It's good to have you back. Now, uh, when we met Donald the first time, Donald has a uh, program that's been picked up by a national cable system channel, uh, Destination America, mm -hmm. and your uh, pilot has aired how many times in the last six months? Uh, and since October 24th, it's aired 15 times. 15 times. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, the ratings have been... The ratings, the ratings, the ratings were solid. Real, they were real good. Uh, one week uh, on one of the reshows, it was the second highest rated show for the entire week. On cable. And that was without them doing any advertising. So, all right. Now, uh, what does that mean? Uh, I'm, I believe I understand you're in negotiations for a, for a series at this point. Yeah, we've got our fingers crossed anyhow. Right now, it's looking good, but nothing has been etched in stone. Uh, we should know something here in the next few weeks. And what would that mean? There would be a series of shows shot around the, the South? Yeah, uh, what we'll do is we, we'll pick locations that we've got known activity with these creatures, and we've got witnesses that we can go talk to and interview and then go uh, see what we find. Okay, so let's segue back to uh, what the show is about. You are a Bigfoot hunter. Yes, sir. And uh, you have uh, been doing this for how long? Oh, God, uh, probably 15 years or so. What possessed you to become a, a Bigfoot hunter? Well, it's like last time I was telling you my encounter when I was growing up as a kid. We mm -hmm. found that dead hog and everything and found the tracks like this. And then uh, lo and behold, I just didn't think about it for years. Then the internet came out and I got to thinking about it and started doing a little uh, internet researching and kind of found the group I'm with now. And that group is what? The Gulf Coast Bigfoot Research Organization. And is that the group that is involved with the television production? Yeah, that's the whole show is based on our organization, how we hunt these animals, and what all we do. Do you know of any other organization around the country like this? There are others, I guess. There's one or two others that mm -hmm. we're on the pro-kill side, which means uh, proof, uh, putting a body on the table as proof of species. Most of them are not like that. They don't want to see one hurt. So... You uh, are dedicated, your mission of the, in this organization is to actually uh, kill a, a Bigfoot so that science can do the research. And, and that and protect all the rest of them. I see, yeah. So it's a, you've got a beneficial uh, outlook when why you're doing this. However, you do you intend to kill one. It, we do. As anything that has ever been uh, discovered, they've had to have a body. Mm -hmm. And these things are so smart and so elusive that now, there's no way you can capture one. I mean, I've seen pine trees this big around where something has grabbed it, twisted the pine tree, and laid it over. You can see where the bark is stripped. Is that one of the pictures that you brought? The, uh, the, I've got, the, I've got the, some, the tree that's bent over. Uh, those just where they grabbed it and just kind of broke, snapped it over like now, that. Now, what, what makes, now, where was this picture taken? Uh, that was actually uh, south of Forest. Forest. Okay, now, what makes you think that that is what happened to that tree? I uh, just a lot of knowledge of how these things work. Can we look at it one more time, Brandon? Let's take another closer look. Yeah. So that is that just broken or is that twisted and broken? It's just snapped over. That's just a, snapped over. That's a, that tree is that big around. It's, it's a three-inch tree. So now I, that's, tr I tried to take and grab it here and do this. I could not break it. Well, yeah. It and pretty there, there's no way a truck could get into where I was at. It's open there. All around it was a swamp. I had what to else water. could have done it? Is there What other plausible idea can... can what other, who else could do that in the middle of the forest? Uh... I don't know if a bear could break over or anything like that. I've never been around bears much. Uh, I know what their tracks look like. That's about it. But uh, there was nothing up the limb where, like a bear, it would grab it with his teeth and broke it. Yeah. It would take a hand to grab and snap it over. 
I see. Is that a common uh, thing you find when you're it looking is. for Bigfoot? It is. They uh, snap the tree. Th that, uh, a lot of times we've seen them where there's one here and one here, and it lay over opposite directions. It's kind of like a path, a trail marker, so they'll know exactly where to go at night because they can see real good at night. Uh, we believe they see in the infrared spectrum as well. So they can come up and they trail camera open. Let me because a trail camera, they're going to have infrared light on there, and they can see that. They can hear the mechanics. They're hearing it so well, and they see these trees laid over or in a cross, and they know that's where they're supposed to go or stay away from. So, is there any uh, research or, or any thought on what the brain capacity of a Bigfoot is? Is it anywhere close to being human? Or uh, there's never been any, you know, real study because they don't have a body right now right. to determine the brain mass, but. From us being around them and our whole group, we've got people that have been around these things for 15, 20 years. I mean, dozens and dozens of encounters with them. And it was best described for me by uh, one of our leaders, Jim Lansdale. He said, imagine a five-year-old child with 30 years of a life experience. That's pretty smart. You know, they're not super intelligent like we would be, but they're smart enough to know what to and what not to do. To, to get caught on film or by somebody. So what is the idea? Is this uh, a missing link in the primate, evol the evolution of primates? Uh, we don't know until one is put on the table. But no. don't you think that, that that's probably what it is? I mean, if- It, it, it very well could I be. I mean, it, it, they look like a primate, and yeah. so- There's uh, theories that it uh, uh, evolved from Gigant Gigantopithecus, which was an eight foot tall ape that was in Asia, and it come across the land mass up around the northwest side of Alaska up there and came down the land bridge and got in the southeast. So the there northwest. is a record of, of, of a, of a primate is. that was eight feet. Yes. Well, the there you go. Gigantopithecus. Well, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's still, this is a little something <clears throat> we believe is a little bit different than that. Why? Uh, just, it's not just a primate, it's smart. You know, primates are smart, but this thing is above a primate is, is, uh, in its intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's like, sort of like a missing link. <sighs> I mean, we'll, know, we'll know when we put one down. So, uh, what is uh, what has been the feedback from your show? When people have seen the show, are they becoming believers? Are the people still skeptical? Because a lot of people are skeptical about such a, a creature even existing. But you believe that it's true, and you've seen them, and yeah. so you you're not uh, you do not disbelieve. You believe. No, I know they're real. I've you seen. You know them they're real. And we've had uh, there's two different trains of thought when they've seen our show. Some people. Or man, that is the greatest show I've ever seen. Please, I hope I hope they pick y'all up because we do everything realistic. There's no fake stuff in anything we do. Then there's the other crowd that are that, you know, the tree huggers that like the Harry and the Hendersons. They think Bigfoot's like that, and you know they want to give him a big hug. And we've had people look at it. I hope y'all get out there and y'all shoot each other, or we hope it catches you and kills you. And we're like, you know, really? You know, y'all are just wonderful people. People have been pushed to that extreme. Yeah, I mean, almost to death threats. Yeah. And it's just it's crazy the way some of these people think. They would rather one of us get killed than us to prove the species to protect every other Bigfoot in the world. What have been, uh, can you tell us about some of your experiences in, in close proximity or in visible proximity to a Bigfoot? Well, other than seeing the one that I saw down in uh, South the Forest. Well, just me and two of my buddies, we were out, uh, I think it was about two or two and a half miles back down this old uh, old logging road. It was blocked off the front, so we had to walk the whole way in there. And we see something out of the corner of our eye. You can see it dark from tree to tree. And this is at night, full moon out. The moon's starting to get ready to set, so it's low in the horizon. And we see this thing darting. And a, a buddy of mine, he was sitting there, and when it started getting close, it darted, and he got a good look at it. He scared him so bad, he fell off the bucket he was sitting on. He said, uh, it's here. And then all of a sudden, about 10 minutes later, it stepped out from behind a tree with a full moon directly behind it at 50 feet. And you saw this? Mm hmm He was standing there doing this. And how big was it? Uh, around seven to seven and a half feet tall. Shoulders mm -hmm. were probably three and a half foot wide. It, it was a pretty good sized creature. So did that scare you? Mm -mm. you? You weren't afraid that the creature would attack you? No, we all had pistols in our pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go in the woods and you can have a bad encounter or you can have a good encounter. It's just a feeling you get that we were not going to have a bad encounter at this particular place. We know that three weeks prior to that, a small one, a juvenile, was seen at this exact location. So we were assuming this was the, the mother or the female of the clan. Mm -hmm. the, the baby was seen, it was, I think, about three feet tall. And the guy had a, a flashlight. He had a red lens on it. 
And he was walking down, there was a berm at the end of the road. He's going down and shining, and all of a sudden, six or eight feet away, he sees it, gets, he's got the light on it the whole time, runs right in front of him. What did he, how do you describe it? I, at night, you really couldn't tell a whole lot of the features. He just said it's, it was a Bigfoot. Because mm -hmm. I think he had seen one before. How big would the male be, the full grown male? Uh, we've got reports of them being up to 10 feet. Right. The average size is probably seven and a half to eight and a half foot tall. Mm -hmm. and that, I understand that there's uh, different uh, strains of this creature in different parts of the country. There is, uh, and a lot of it has to do with inbreeding. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the ones you find are going to have five toes. The ones that we have found that are aggressive only have three toes. I don't know if it's, you know, hey, honey, you, this, this, this is my girlfriend and my cousin, and they've kind of had some babies, and they've caused the inbreeding, and they're just, just meaner, which that's a pr scientifically proven fact. If you've got a lot of inbreeding, they're, they're not quite right in the head, a little different. And those are the ones that are coming up and uh, have attacked, actually attacked people. So uh, evidently they're not monogamous in their relationship. Right? I reckon not. I reckon not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you've got uh, a recording. When we come back mm -hmm. from the break, you've got a recording that was made of, in the middle of the night, I would assume, mm -hmm. of, of a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was recorded by a lady in Oklahoma. Yeah, this is actually in the southeast Oklahoma. And uh, I listened to it when, I, when it first came out. It was on Facebook like everything is these days. I listened to it and said, whoa, that was actually real. And all the members of my group listened to it and said, you know what, it, it is real. We tried to contact the lady, but she did not want to be contacted, didn't want to have to deal with a bunch of people coming on her place. On her Facebook page when she had the sound recording, what did she think the sound was of? No, she knew what it was. She knew what it was. Mm -hmm. So she, she said, this, is, this has got to be a Bigfoot. What do y'all think? And, 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 and did she explain the setup of how she came outside? And, mm -hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that too. Okay. Okay, we're with Donald McDonald. He's recounting his experience as a Bigfoot hunter and his uh, pilot, which was recently on Destination America, uh, and aired 15 times over the last number of months. <laughs> and it looks as though it, it, he might have a pilot on yeah. a, an actual yeah. series on his hands on national cable. Uh, that is 50 50 right now, so 50 we'll, 50. We'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah, and so we'll talk to him about uh, his exploits in the field after this. Since 1849, Carter Jewelers has been a part of Jackson's rich history. Over 163 years later, we've not only survived, Carter Jewelers has flourished. From generation to generation, we've established a tradition of excellence. Our reputation is built on customer satisfaction, service, and trust. Every piece of jewelry is hand-picked, so you know you're getting the best value. Nobody says I do like we do at Carter Jewelers. Come see us and be part of our history. We're back with Donald McDonald, and Donald is a Bigfoot hunter, and he is a part of a group called the Gulf Coast Bigfoot Research Organization. Research Organization. And uh, National Cable, Destination America, mm -hmm. has found his group, and uh, they've shot a pilot, which has aired a number of times on that cable network nationally. And right now, you're in the running for a cable series based on your group's mm -hmm. hunting of the Bigfoot. Exactly. Which, what is the mission of the group? What do you want to do when you find one? Put one on the slab. Um, that's the only way you're going to prove a species if them to have a body laying there that they can examine and see exactly what it is. Now, how much flack are you getting, you know, when you're talking about killing a Bigfoot? I mean, it's a pretty serious uh, mission you're on. Do, what's the percentage of people that say, yes, this is good for research, and people, other people say, no, don't harm that animal? Uh, it's probably 80-20 that, that don't want you to harm it. But then you got the people that, now, we know you've got to have one for proof of species, but don't hurt it. Mm -hmm. well, but they want it proven. They, they just don't want to come out and say, please kill one. Well, someone might say, why don't you try to capture one? Uh, what would happen if they caught one of these things? They'd put it in a cage. They would constantly be testing it. They would, uh, tissue samples, blood samples, everything else. This animal would be, uh, which used to be a wild animal, be in a small cage and be tested daily. It would live a miserable lifestyle. It would never get turned back loose. I mean, what, what if someone would say something like, well, you know, Donald, here we are, you know, as a nation, you know, a few hundred years into the existence of this country, and we do not have one at this point. What 
how could it be that something is running around in the forest that's not been documented at this point? What would you say? Well, there's, there's been thousands upon thousands of reports. I've got probably close to a thousand just from Mississippi. We've got pictures. Uh, pictures can be doctored, so they, that's, that can't be proof. Uh, we have blood samples we've turned in. They came back unknown primate from blood samples. Is that what they say, unknown primate? Um, they don't have a body to match it to. But they know it's a primate, though. Mm -hmm. They know that much. Exactly. The DNA came back unknown primate. It's close to the chimp, close to the gorilla, and the bobino, which is uh, the latest and smartest chimp and gorilla and out there. And you're talking about something in the deep south, in the southeastern U.S., the blood well, samples. Oh, yes. That was from actually from uh, actually northwest Louisiana. And we know that there are no uh, primates, you know, n uh, naturally uh, inhabiting the woods in north Louisiana that we know of. Except these things. Except these things. And there's, there's not just one. There's a lot of them over there. Uh, I've got reports from there. I've got a lot from down around Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, uh, it's a hot spot over there. And there's some mean ones there. The, there's been quite a few people that have come up missing in the National Forest down there at Sam Houston. Really? Mm -hmm. Like recently in the last year? Yeah, well, several. Uh, David Pilates did it, has got a book on it, the uh, missing 411 or something like that. And he describes all these people that have come up missing in all the national parks. And so what is his idea? What, what's, where are they? Does he, does he talk about Bigfoot? Yeah. He does? Mm -hmm. What does he say? Uh, he, he, uh, what I've read, of, I hadn't read the whole book. I've read just uh, little tidbits of it. Uh -huh. And from what I was understanding, that he was thinking that uh, these things have killed quite a few people. So what is the idea? If they kill you, are they killing you just to be mean, or are they killing you to eat you? I don't know. Uh, probably just to run you out of a territory. As you come in, and there's kind of like if you run across a mother bear with cubs. Mm -hmm. And you get too close, what are they going to do? They're mm -hmm. going to try to run you out of their territory, and if you get in the way, uh, they're going to kill you or, or maim you. So are there many recordings of Bigfoot screeching in the night, or is this a rarity? Yeah, yeah there's quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, uh, we've got one from Louisiana. We've got, God, I've got several from Mississippi. And so there is a distinct sound when you hear this. Mm -hmm. Will you, you can readily say, that's a Bigfoot? Yeah, a lot of people say, oh, it's a coyote. Well, if you listen close, it's not a coyote. It's, uh, there's a few wolves, the red wolves in Mississippi. Uh, I've had a couple of uh, wildlife biologists listen to it. They said it's not a wolf. They don't know what it is. I even sent it out to a guy, I can't remember his name. He was in Texas. and He is supposed to be one of the nation's top people as far as uh, figuring out what animal is recorded. Mm -hmm. They said it's nothing I can know. Now, uh, we've got that image of the snap tree, uh, and we'll use that as our image, mm -hmm. and we'll put the sound effect over it. That that image again. Uh, you you saw you saw that image. Yeah, I right? took I mean, the picture. You took the picture, and that was in the middle of the forest, mm -hmm. in forest, Mississippi. Yeah, that's, that's south there a little ways. South of there a little ways. You don't want to say exactly no. where. Uh, could we see that image, uh, Brandon? This is the, the the this is the the three inch sapling, mm -hmm. and we'll leave this up as our there's, there's video. One back behind it, back there, right uh -huh. behind it. There's another one that's, that's just a little bit smaller. And so it's snapped off in a, in a line. So your theory is that this was, um, this was uh, not something that most creatures in the deep forest were able to do except for something with hands. I, I couldn't break it. You couldn't break it? Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I teach martial arts two nights a week because I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm not a weak boy, and mm -hmm. I tried to grab it and could not break it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what? Well, it's, it's about three inches. Yeah. That's a pretty big mm -hmm. little sapling. Yeah. Okay, let's listen to it now. This is the, the sound effect of... Especially at the end. The first one is not that definite, but when you get that rumble sound or that second one, God, yeah. you can hear them. Now, that. That's not a wolf. You know, it's not a coyote. Especially at the end, you can, it's, it's really. So, okay, uh, tell us the story. The lady, what was the story about this lady uh, who recorded this on her iPhone? Yeah, that, that was my understanding. She uh -huh. posted it on her Facebook page. Uh -huh. And she just uh, heard something outside, and she went outside and held her phone up and recorded it. And she posted up there, hey, uh, I think I've got a Bigfoot recording. What do y'all think? And we tried to contact her. I emailed her three or four times. I've got uh, members of our group that are in that area. Southeast Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to get them in touch with her. I, I saw it as soon as I saw it. I got a hold of her. I tried to get a hold of her. So we'd be the first ones to talk to her. And, and she, she just never respond. did respond. Yeah. A lot of people, the, I don't know, they just 
they just really don't want to get into the media and things like that, I guess. Yeah, right, right. Well, it's sort of, uh, you know, co it's a controversial subject. I mean, yeah. you know, some people believe, some people don't. Some people would say don't harm them. Some, yeah. some people say kill them. You say 80% say leave them alone, don't kill them, yeah. right? Yeah, tree huggers, what we call them. Yeah. And I've, been to a, I've talked to a lot of folks. I've been on uh, 14 or 15 research trips since October, and I've seen some weird things and talked to some people that are scared to death. So, okay, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the weird things you've seen. We have a few more graphics to show, too. Yeah, I brought several pictures. And there's a function that, that, that's going on that will bring together people who are in the forest mm -hmm. that you're putting on. Yes. That will be uh, very interesting for people who want to go further and explore mm -hmm. uh, this possibility. No, you'll, you'll learn a lot. I've got some uh, real good people coming in that have had a lot of experience with these animals. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a video presentation, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about we'll it here. We'll talk more about it. Okay, we'll be right back with Donald McDonald after these messages. We're back with Donald McDonald, and he is uh, the Bigfoot hunter. Yes. And uh, we've been talking about. Uh, well, we, we, we did the sound. Of, we did the sound yes. of the lady who recorded on our iPhone a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. And you feel pretty certain that that's what that yes. is. We, uh, myself, and all members of my group have listened to it, and we all pretty much come to agreement. Yes, that's one. Can we hear it again? Let's listen to what the lady in Southeast Oklahoma recorded on her iPhone at her home. So is southeastern Oklahoma noted as a place where Bigfoot is yeah, uh, at? Uh, southeastern Oklahoma, East Texas, and West Louisiana are probably three of the hotter spots in the United States. How hot is Mississippi in that regard? Uh, Mississippi is probably in the top ten in the nation. Top ten in the nation. Okay, we've got a few more graphics. Let's take a look. Now, uh, this was something that, this is not a Bigfoot, but this, explain what this is. Uh, uh, we were up on a research trip, me and my wife, we were riding down the road. This is up in the Mississippi Delta. And we're going down the road, and we, I slam my brakes when I see this, and it's, uh, somebody's got a cutout of a mother bear and two cubs, and then a Bigfoot in the back. That thing's probably eight foot tall. Now, why would they do that? Uh, I was on a research trip, so, and I have got actual encounters uh, uh, less than a mile from this exact so location. it could be that someone is uh, signifying well, what they have seen in real life. There was a reason they've got it there. They something saw, like it that. It wasn't just because, hey, this is neat. Uh, they, something has happened to cause them to think about Bigfoot. Uh-huh, right. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now, what's this? All right, over on the left side is my thumb. This uh -huh. is an old abandoned shack we found. And on the right, you can see two fingers right there, one here and one there. that are twice, or a little bit bigger than twice as big as my thumb. Uh-huh. Or something has been in there. Something, and that was in, in the forest? Yeah, that was uh, out in the middle of the woods, actually, in an old abandoned shack. Really? Okay, what else do we have? Now, this is, now that's a foot, huh? That's a track right there. At the base of the knife is the heel. And just past the tip, you can see the toes as they curl around mm -hmm. the whole track cast. So right how, how much bigger than that? How big is that knife? That's about a 16-inch track. 16 inch? Mm -hmm. That's a big knife. Yes. Well, no, the track's 16. The knife's uh -huh. about 14 and a half. But, yeah, so that's how big. Uh -huh. Interesting. So that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a big boar right there. Uh -huh. And this is just a, a wide trail. One thing we look for, we look for the wide trails like this that are unnaturally wide. If a deer's coming through there, it's going to be usually a small trail. Mm -hmm. These things get in there, and for some reason, they make a lot wider trail coming through there. Mm -hmm. And we found tracks and everything else coming off these big, we call them super highways, when they get that big. Yeah. And something's big has been, been on those trails. It's not just a deer or a raccoon. All right. All right, let's go to your event. This is the event, mm -hmm. Down South Bigfoot Rally. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this. This is May 9th, right? Yeah, May 9th, uh, and it's my, South Mississippi. Uh, 
you can see the information right there. Undisclosed uh, location. Well, how will anyone find out about it? Uh, email me at my email address, Don underscore 1145 at yahoo.com, and I can give them the information. I don't want people coming in and messing with people that are going to be there. So can we say what part of the state this it's is? It's going to be in southwest Mississippi. Southwest Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And are you going to meet in the forest? or? No, I've, uh, we're at a state park. Uh, I've rented a pavilion for the day. We've got people coming in from four or five different states. There's going to be a video presentation by a real good buddy of mine, M.K. Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to go over, I uh, don't know what he's going to go over. Uh, he's done a lot of work on the Patterson-Gimlin film, the one where the one walks across the uh, uh -huh. canal and everything about years ago. Uh -huh. does they, he does stabilized that the to be real? I mean, it, it is. It, yeah. I mean, that, it's understood that that's real within the community who are interested in this. Well, you, when you can see the muscles moving, that's not a costume. Mm -hmm. In the 1960s, they, yeah, they had gorilla costumes, but you could not make the muscles, individual muscles, move. Mm -hmm. He stabilized everything and does such a great job that you can see the actual muscles moving. Let's look at it with the graphic one more time, Brandon, so we can look at that email, mm -hmm. don underscore 1145 at yahoo.com, mm -hmm. and that's for more information from Donald McDonald. Or if you go to the nitique.com website, there's a contact form there. If you send it to us, we'll get it, and then we'll respond yeah. back with that yeah. so that you can yeah. uh, be a part of that. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll be fun. We've got a lot of people that are coming in from all over the southeast that have had a lot of time in the woods with these animals. That's a Saturday? Yes, yeah, Saturday, May the 9th. Okay, good. And I'm gonna, it's, it's seven dollars and fifty cents, and that's just to help me pay because I'm I'm feeding a barbecue lunch. Right. And rent the pavilion. I'm kind of just trying to offset my costs. Well, Donald, uh, thanks for coming. Oh, always. And, and good luck with the show. Hopefully, you get picked up and have a, a network cable well, series. You know, we've got our fingers crossed. Anyhow, we'll and, see what happens. And whatever happens, we'll have you back on. We'll report uh, mm -hmm. what happens next. Well, okay. Come on down to the event. Yeah. Well, maybe so. There's maybe no I'll see a Bigfoot. Uh, and I can. We uh, are gonna hit the woods. Talk uh, talk about it on the show. Right? <laughs> so, okay, thanks for coming. All right, buddy. And thank you for being with us on this edition of Nitique. We'll see you next time.